Hi, I'm Peter Kelmstrom of Kelmstrom.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll continue talking about the meetings content type that I created in a content type hub, and then I updated it and uh, waited for those updates to be published. And now I'm gonna continue working on it. So uh, one of the things that I chose to do here is I didn't add action points as a multi-line text entry, which I could have, but instead I um, asked the user to create a hyperlink to a list based on the action point content type. So that might get a bit complicated, so I'm going to start with uh, explaining how to do that. So it's uh, you add an app based on the tasks, call that IT action points, create that. And it's important that this is based on the tasks content type because then you get some extra views and all that. So, so that's a good thing. So the IT action points, and then to, uh, for it to use my special content type, I'm going to go in and add from existing site content types. Notice that when I base a new list on the tasks content type or the list template, it's already set to allow management of content types, so I don't have to do that. So I'm gonna add an existing site content type. I'm gonna use the Contoso action point. That's what I'm gonna use, all right? And then I'm gonna remove the regular task there, delete this content type, and finally, I'm going to enable versioning settings. Of course, I always want to do that. That is, of course, quite a few steps to do. And uh, it might be too much to ask the share person or somebody responsible for the meeting to do that every time. So what you could do is just save this list as a template. However, that template is only based on my site collection. So you need to distribute that if you want to automate this a bit further. Contoso action points. So that of course makes it easier. So now if I remove this actual list, now when I have a new meeting here, IT meeting, I can start by going into site contents, adding an app, and I'm gonna use the action, Contosho action points. And um, today's date is the um, 26th of July. Right, so I'm just going to name that list, the task lists, July 26th action points. And then I'll copy the shortcut to that and when I create a new meeting here. And then I'll just scroll down and add the action points there. So when you open that meeting now, you get this link and that points you to the uh, 20, July 26th action point. So and that's something you could do. I wish it was really, really simple to you know, automate the whole create a new list, but there isn't really that, that needs to be code. So uh, if you wanna automate that, then it has to be a code solution. But I think that most information workers will have the ability to do that. They'll grumble a bit first, but then they'll hopefully see the benefits. So that's my thinking around those two lists and how they're connected. So in summary, this is a bit of a complex area. I would recommend having the action points in a separate list. Information workers can handle it, but it is a bit of a hassle, I do admit that. So if you wanna make this a simpler solution, simply remove the whole secondary list with action points and just have all the action points in one list or just put the action points in a multi-line text field instead that works too so whichever one works for you the more work you put in the more benefits you'll get of it of course but i understand your point in both of them so that concludes my demonstration on the action points part of my meetings solution thank you for watching